Good morning, Jeffrey Friedman, Senior Commodity Broker, RJO Futures, here in Chicago, with morning comments on Stock Index Futures on January 17th. I always give you the word of the day. Um, I'd have to say bullish. That's the word of the day. Uh, we're making new highs for the year. We're making higher highs than last year. This would be the fifth year the stock index futures are going up. Now there's a lot, we've had a lot of news this whole week and most of it was digested into bullishness going up. Short term trend is up and we'll get to that in a minute. Let me highlight some of the things that are going on. First thing in the morning, initial claims which is an employment weekly report, how many people need assistance. That went down by 35,000, so that was good. And part of the stat on that report is it was the biggest downdraft in any one week since January of 08 on jobless claims. Also, housing starts went up. Another different area of our economy the housing market is, by these stats, are looking like it's improving. It was the best housing start since August of 08. So the stock market index future traders are cheering by making new highs. And we are currently in the March contract around 1475. That's up about 10 points, give or take, depending on when you view this uh, report. Uh, we've had a slew of reports. This week, economically, uh, retail sales was pretty good. PPI was tame. That's an inflationary kind of gauge. CPI was tame, another on the consumer level of inflation. So uh, QE1, 2, 3, 4, whatever you want to say, is not affecting inflation according to those two reports. If you look at other reports, you might disagree with that finding and possibly you want to look at the CRB index for a better gauge of commodity inflation. Now, have said all that, the beige book was a little disappointing yesterday, but not enough to hurt the stock index futures, okay? So, uh, also on the docket of good things is, you know, we're in the midst of earnings. Earnings are very important. This week alone, we have a lot of the bank uh, stocks are going to issue their earnings and the reason I mention that is because that seems to be a dominant force in the S&P future contract because they're so dominant of weighted average in the uh, S&P um, and just to give you maybe some of the earnings that are coming out uh, Bank of America disappointing did not seem to hurt the stock index futures it was down two percent uh, so, but we have so much more coming out. We got Citigroup, we got Intel, which will affect, you know, obviously the NASDAQ, uh, American Express, Capital One, a lot of the banking stocks are coming out. Keep that in mind. So what, we might have volatility, we might have a lot of noise. Now, have said all that, in Europe, um, believe it or not, um, there was a, a press conference with the ECB and they proclaim victory that the worst part of the Euro crisis has passed and another verbiage without really concrete evidence that they think that things will get more uh, passive in the situation in Europe. So another plus, kind of like uh, China in Asia, uh, their economy is growing a little faster than we thought. There's two ways to interpret it interpret that, but we'll get involved with that at a later date. Let's move right along into the technicals real quick so that you can say, hey, on a conservative basis, maybe I want to trade with the trend. The trend is up, okay? So uh, aggressive traders would be counter trend, and that would be a completely different discussion on methodology of trading, and here is just the basis of what's going on and the tone of the day. We're up. Uh, initial claims, so employment report that came out was very good, uh, and housing was very good, and those are the two areas that most economists are concerned with our economy long term, and that's why the stock market 
index futures are acting so well. Now, have said all that, we're right around 1475. I mentioned that just a minute ago. That's minor resistance. Remember, we made a new high in our quarterly report. I was saying that the trends are friend and we will probably get to 1475. Well, we, we got to it in probably two weeks. Uh, just looking at the charts, obviously no guarantee um, when looking at price behavior on the charts. But if we can close above 1475, 1476, 77. The next target, according to chart analysts, would be 1510 as our big target. Um, going on the way down, if we, you know, we hit 1475, if we can't break through and we pull back, obviously your breakout level was 1460-ish. I would have to say, looking at my charts, 1455 closed basis underneath that level would be a failed rally in my opinion, that phrase, keep that in mind, not saying to buy or sell, just saying that it couldn't hold it and it couldn't hold that level. If we close under 1455, then we're gonna probably penetrate or at least try to get to 1435. A close two days in a row under 1435, in my opinion, okay, would be a trend reversal point, meaning we're in an uptrend, we pulled back and we made damage more than we wanted to for the bulls to feel satisfied and the bears would kind of take control and start beating up the market. That would be two days in a row under 1435. I've given you a lot of ranges, levels to consider buying or selling depending if you're bullish or bearish, depending if you're an aggressive or conservative trend follower, depends on your methodology. You can always call me, Jeff Friedman, we could talk about any market you want, any methodology you want in trading and how to approach the market short term or long term. Remember always, trading futures or option to futures involves risk of loss. Not suitable for everyone. I wish you all a great day and good luck and good trading.